In today's video, I will show you how I made these beautiful, 5 nines fine, pure silver crystals. And I did it with an electrolyte that didn't involve me dissolving pure silver in nitric acid for a day. And I didn't have to deal with any nitrogen dioxide gas. You need a few basic pieces of equipment for this experiment, but nothing too difficult to get your hands on. First, you'll need a small plastic tub with a hole and a filter in. This will serve as your anode basket. I've actually used too much cotton in this filter. You only need enough to cover the hole. Next, you'll need an anode. This is the bar I made in my previous video and is around 99% pure. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description for it. Now you're going to need a beaker or a jar to hold your electrolyte. I have 50 grams of electrolyte ready to dissolve. And finally, you're going to need a cathode. For the cathode, I'm using a stainless steel spoon. I've wrapped some PTFE tape around the handle to prevent the crystals from growing up the handle. Whenever you are working with silver, it is important to use distilled water. Distilled water is free of chlorides, unlike tap water. I'll use this to dissolve the electrolyte. Add 250 milliliters of water to the electrolyte. The electrolyte I'm using is silver nitrate crystals. These crystals can be bought online in areas where it's difficult or expensive to buy nitric acid. Silver nitrate is sold as crystal for use in photography. The electrolyte dissolves easily in water. If you are making your own electrolyte by dissolving pure silver in nitric acid, you have to first purchase the silver, which probably has a premium attached. You then have to buy the nitric acid, which is expensive in some countries, and you then have to spend a day dissolving the silver and making sure you've gotten rid of all the nitric acid in the electrolyte. The result is silver nitrate in water. But by purchasing the silver nitrate crystals, all that work has been done for you. All you have to do is add water. Now, lower the anode basket into the electrolyte. You want the filter to sit below the level of the electrolyte so that the solution makes contact with the anode. You can now drop the anode in and start to connect the wires from the power supply. Connect the black wire to the cathode. And connect the red wire to the anode. You're now ready to start growing pure silver crystals. All that's left is to switch on the power supply and adjust the voltage and the current to find the right amount of current for your setup. You'll need a bit of trial and error to work out what current you need to run at. I suggest starting low and working your way up until you find a nice level. This was where I removed some of the cotton filter and the current flow increased. After around 15 minutes, the silver had already covered the bottom of the spoon with tiny fine crystals and a larger crystal was starting to grow out from the side. Let me explain what's happening in this reaction. The silver ions are being taken from the silver anode and they're being deposited on the stainless steel cathode. If there are any trace amounts of copper in the anode, the copper ions will replace silver ions in the solution. If your silver is highly contaminated with copper, the electrolyte will be depleted of silver very quickly and once saturated, the copper will start to co-deposit onto your cathode. If there's any platinum or palladium in the anode, it will fall into the filter. These trace amounts can be recovered at a later date. After running the cell for six hours, I've already collected a fair amount of crystals. The cotton filter had started to become clogged, so I've swapped it out for a new one. You'll know when the filter is clogged as the current on your power supply will start to drop. The crystals look quite brown through the camera. I think this is due to the lighting, but if you could see these in person, they actually look like tiny shiny mirrors. 
In this next couple of minutes, I've recorded some time-lapse footage and this was recorded over a 1 hour and 30 minute period. On the left side of the beaker, I've overlaid a still image so that you can see a sort of before and after picture. This will give you a better idea of how much the crystals grow over that amount of time. If you look at the top left of the beaker, you will notice the larger crystals reaching out across the beaker. The crystals are trying to grow towards the anode. After they reach a certain size, they collapse under their own weight and fall down. This is something that you need to be mindful of. If the crystals reach the anode, it could cause a short circuit and trip out your power supply. It may also burn a hole through your filter and it could contaminate your pure crystals. If they start to get too close, just knock them down with a glass stir rod or something similar. If you compare the anode now to the anode when I started, you can see that it's pretty worn down. After a couple of ADAR runs, I've collected a good amount of crystals. The solution hasn't turned blue, so what I'll do is set it aside while I rinse off the crystals and I'll use it to show you what happens if the anode is highly contaminated with copper. I'll speed through this a little. It's just a few minutes of me washing the crystals in distilled water repeatedly. Here I'm collecting a sample of the rinse water. I want to test it to make sure I've washed all of the silver nitrate off the crystals. To do this, I will add a few milliliters of hydrochloric acid. If there is any silver nitrate in the water, it will precipitate some silver chloride. As you can see, it turned a little milky, a few more rinses, and it should be good. A couple of rinses later, and all of the silver nitrate has been washed from the crystals. As you can see, when I drop in the hydrochloric acid, there is no white precipitate. Now, in the anode basket, I've added a small button of sterling silver. Sterling silver is made up of 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. I'll show you what happens if the copper content is high. After 30 minutes, I can already see a blue tint to the solution. That means copper is going into the solution. After another hour, the solution is an even darker blue. The crystals that are growing are still 5 nines pure at this point, but if I were to continue, the electrolyte will be saturated with copper and eventually it will turn from a silver cell to a copper cell. Now it's time to get some of those crystals melted. What I have here is a microwave furnace. This is my favorite way to melt precious metals. I usually use a small melt dish inside here, but today, I'll try something different. Today, I'm going to melt the crystals inside the mold. I've placed one troy ounce of the silver crystals into the mold for melting. Simply place the furnace into the microwave, set the timer, and wait. I set the timer for 8 minutes initially, but unfortunately, that wasn't long enough, so I had to put it back in for another 10 minutes. This is an old microwave, and it is no longer used for heating food. Wow, that is hot.
I placed the lid back on to allow it to cool to a solid. After 10 minutes, it's still red hot inside. I think I'll go back to using the small melt dish inside the furnace. I think that much heat was too much for the graphite mold. Anyway, here it is, one troy ounce of beautiful pure silver. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.